Hello, hello, my fellow art nerds. Welcome to the stream today. If we haven't met before, my name is Faye and we will be doing a traditional stream. Yay for traditional. <laughs> I know we do a lot of digital content here, um, but we obviously, you know, traditional is super, super important, um, a set of skills. And today we're going to be doing a pencil, fully pencil demo. So welcome in everybody. Thanks for those of you who are here early. I see some regulars. Welcome in. Welcome in Mumu. You're always here for our streams. Thank you for being here and for all the support. Hey there, Quinn. Hey there, everybody, and Joe, our lovely mod. Thank you for being here. So today we are going to be drawing hair. So hopefully you guys uh, will be drawing along with me. All you need is a pencil and some paper. Um, and feel free to let me know in the chat if you have any questions about hair drawing in general. So what you see in this demo is actually from uh, our Drawing Foundations 2 class long time ago when I did a hair demo. Um, and so today we're going to be drawing something different. Uh, different hairstyles, but in the same technique. So before we get started, um, just a reminder that our mission at Wing Canvas is to make art education easily accessible to everyone. So <laughs> Um, tune in live for free lessons every weekend, Saturday and Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we try to stream every weekend to make our lessons free. So you can get started for absolutely free. Just put that in your calendar and join us every weekend, 3 p.m. Eastern daylight time. All right, and if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together. So be sure to check out the links in our social media and in the description below. And you can check out our, our website for class offerings where you can get critique and guidance and encouragement from our instructors because we're not just a YouTube channel, we are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us so that we can make free content, con consider supporting us by becoming a YouTube member. Um, and you can join us either on YouTube or on Patreon. If you join us on YouTube, you get some lovely uh, badges and emotes. If you join us on Patreon, uh, similar benefits, but we have a special announcement for our members. So if you are a Patreon member, you get members only chat and critique, and we have increased the amount of office hours that we now offer. So if you want critique and guidance on your artwork, you can join our Patreon. You can join the lowest tier until summer and you can still get members only critique. So that's for a limited time. So definitely check that out. All right. So before we move on, it is submission time. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. This is our first submission. Uh, this is from Bootleg Human. So thank you all for submitting your artwork. Every month we have a daily challenge, uh, sorry, a monthly challenge. And this month, because it's April and it rains all month <laughs> uh, here in Canada, we decided to theme it April showers. And we've gotten some really great submissions from our community. This one is by Bootleg Human. And these are really, really cute uh, little characters. And I love the storytelling here. And I love seeing traditional artwork guys on the server. So keep those coming. If you have a rain related artwork, you can submit it on our discord. So 
exclamation point discord if you want to join uh we post our monthly subscription uh monthly submissions and if you submit you have a chance to be featured on stream you can also tag us on uh instagram and we'd be happy to give you a shout out there as well all right so great job i love the ink work i love the stylization of this piece um i think it's really really cute and so great job and thanks bootleg human for submitting all right and let's see what is the next one here ah evianon i love this piece uh if you guys are on our discord you will know evie she is our one of our lovely mods uh, and she offers really great feedback as well. So I really love this piece. I think it's, you know, super, super detailed with even the wet hair. The wet hair is something that <laughs> I was like, this is perfect for the hair stream. Um, so yeah, great job. Even like the complexity of the, of the outfit, of the dress and all, all of those bunches, this is not an easy feat. And if you've ever tried to draw an umbrella, even harder to do <laughs> um so great job love this this piece just love the style and the very difficult angle as well really really nice job with shading especially on the legs like whoa that looks great all right and our third submission shout out to starverse what a really really awesome piece this one is just great mood really love the palette too um this analogous palette you know with the purples and the blues guys analogous palettes always look good <laughs> like if you have trouble with color analogous palettes will almost always look awesome um, if you don't, if you don't know, you can check out our color theory, uh, tutorials on the channel, but analogous colors are basically colors next to each other on the color wheel. And so it almost always looks great because the colors are related. Um, and in particular, I just love how, you know, this, this is a very nostalgic piece. It's like you're standing on the balcony looking out it's rainy uh, love the little moon in the background just overall really nice composition and mood so great job starverse and keep those submissions coming and let's see so our monthly challenge is april showers just a reminder the uh, submissions are open until the end of the month so be sure to get your submissions in all righty okay guys so let's start let's start the demo um let's see my notes here so my notes say oh says start with shapes not lines so these are some of my tips from my class um, and i'm just gonna tell you guys quickly so you can keep them in mind while you're drawing uh, the key to drawing hair is to start with shapes, not lines, right? All of us, uh, when we first learn how to draw hair, we just kind of draw lines, <laughs> right? Like straw. And that's really not the right approach for drawing hair. Uh, you want to draw shapes um, and start with shapes. And already, if, if you're not starting with shapes and you start with shapes, you are already on your way to becoming better at drawing hair. Um, the next tip is shade your darkest accents first. So what that means is if you start shading and you kind of go little by little, little by little, and you're like, oh, this is taking forever. Well, yeah, it is going to take forever. Um, so start with your darkest parts first. You can see my little value scale up at the top there. Um, my little value scale is a reminder that it's easier to shade and simplify your values. So start with the darkest and then do the midtones. Um, and that way you actually have a reference point for how dark you need to go and it speeds up your shading way faster. Third tip, details are mostly in the transitions. So if you don't know what this means, I will get to it uh, in the demo. But basically, if you are drawing texture in hair, you don't need to texture everything. 
the texture in hair is really in the transitions. So it's where the dark meets the light, um, as you can see in these demos, right? You can see uh, that the, uh, the texture is all where the dark meets the light and not in the darks or not necessarily in the lights. So that's a really important point to remember. Um, and lastly, you want to shade in the direction of hair growth, right? <laughs> Just like if you're, if you're ever shading water, um, you want to shade water uh, horizontally right? Because water is self-leveling and you would never really shade water with vertical strokes unless you're shading a waterfall. So hair is the same thing. You can think of it as flowing like water, right? So you want to shade in the direction of hair growth. All right. So those are some really basic tips. Um, I just want to catch up with the chat for a second. Yay for traditional. Thank you. I agree. I love uh, <laughs> just a simple pencil uh, tutorial, right? Refreshing. Um, should I use pencil, ballpoint pen, or colored pencil? Up to you. Um, let's start with pencil. Pencil's a little bit more forgiving. Um, all right. Let's see here. Uh, uh, uh. Kevin, nice to see you. Please lurk away. <laughs> um, Quinn asks, what medium are we going to be using? We're going to be using pencil. Uh, and does the online art school cost something? We have different ways of learning. Uh, our, we have live classes, uh, but we also have a, um, a Patreon that you can join where you can sort of learn on your own. You can always follow our live streams and learn for free right? And then you can get feedback on your artwork by becoming a member. Uh, and our live classes just are, are really great because they keep you accountable and you can pick the brains of our instructors. All right. If you want to draw with ballpoint pen, awesome. Uh, totally welcome to do that. Um, it's a really great exercise because it not only helps you be brave uh, because you can't erase, you just kind of have to keep going, right? So, all right, so let me turn off this demo here, um, the poll. So before all of our streams, we always ask our audience what you wanna see, right? So what do you struggle with the most when it comes to drawing hair? If you didn't get a chance to vote in the poll, let me know in the chat. Um, and basically most people said hairstyles. I was surprised. And, and, you know, and a lot of people commented with everything. I struggle with everything. I was fully prepared to do like a color demo today, <laughs> but um, I will be drawing, focusing more on hairstyles and textures and shading. And so that's a good old pencil drawing. Uh, ah, textures didn't win. Don't worry, I will include textures for sure. Um, so, oh, artists in the chat. Hey, Starburst, welcome in. All right. Sorry, I'm still catching up with the chat, guys. Um, all right, so keep your questions coming and your comments if you uh, if there's something in particular that you want to see. Okay, so let me show you my references for today. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so <laughs> it took me so long to find these references because I, I felt like I had to pick like the the um, <laughs> I had to pick like really uh, special hairstyles, so it, it really took me forever. But uh, these are the ones I've picked, okay? So I probably only have time to do about four. Um, if I have time for more, then I will do more. But these are what I picked for today. So Trevor Noah, love his hair. It's just like great texture, great volume, uh, really nice just shape language. Also, like I'm a big Trevor Noah, Noah fan. So, you know, uh, great, great uh, pick and excited to draw him. So we're going to be doing men, males and females. So I'll start with the male hairstyles first. Next. So somebody in the poll uh, said, please, please, there are never any tutorials on balding men. Please give this, give my balding girlies a chance. That made me laugh so much. Um, so <laughs> uh, 
Uh, thank you for your comment. I will draw this very popular kind of balding male hairstyle with beard. Um, and, you know, the, the, the very handsome Jason Statham. All right. And then here we go. <laughs> Look at this hair. Look at this hair. Joe Keeney, amazing hairstyle. Um, like just super you know if we're gonna do hairstyles we're, we're we're gonna do some like exaggerated hairstyles today right so um this is a good way of drawing curls and wavy hair so excited to do this so if there is something that you see that that you're like oh i i really want to see you draw this one because i'm showing you six but i only really have time for probably four let me know if there is one that you prefer uh, Sandra O, oh, love Sandra O, oh, and I just love the, the, just the lighting on this hair. It's so nice. Like, I think that the lighting on this hair, and you can even see some subsurface scattering, guys. Like, Jesse talks all the time about subsurface. Yes, there is subsurface in hair as well, especially black hair. Right. Like if you have black hair, like my I, I have black hair. So when my hair is in the sunlight, it looks red. Right. And so I thought this was a really good opportunity to try uh, a very unique hairstyle, because I think somebody also said in the comments uh, that they want to play around with shape language. All right. So here you go. Here's here's the shape language one. And then a good old classic uh, straight hairdo. Right. <laughs> nice straight hair with a little bit of side bang uh, Selena Gomez for you and this one's probably the hardest one oops Beyonce I cut off your face here we go Beyonce yeah good old Beyonce obviously she's got like a million hairstyles I googled Beyonce hair and it was like she can pull off any hairstyle she can go from like blonde to afro to anything and she rocks it so uh, I chose this one for the braids and for the curls and the ponytails so if you want to see me draw this one uh, let me know in the chat okay all right last one please <laughs> this one this one is gonna be so hard okay everybody's saying Beyonce oh my goodness I was hoping that I could do this one last because this one's gonna take so long <laughs> um all right all right you guys have spoken we will start with Beyonce all right Beyonce so Um, usually when I start drawing hair, I'm, I'm going to try to draw two, uh, one on each side. Um, but when, when you draw hair, right, you probably want to start off. Um, I'm just going to show you what I'm using. I have a simple, uh, colored pencil, uh, sorry, uh, simple graphite set. And usually I'll use like a two H or an H I'm going to go a little bit heavier, um, just so you guys can see in the on camera so if you guys have any questions about pencil also let me know but you know you can see that uh, i've pulled out an h an hb a b a 2b a 6b so i like to have uh, different types of pencils because there's hard pencils and there's soft pencils and the soft pencils allow you to draw a lot darker, right? And I want to always make sure that my pencils are super, super sharp. So I like using 4B, 2B and HB, um, but I just wanted to show you like the, prog the progression. So sometimes I'll use an H or a 2H to start. As <laughs> someone said, I'm braving it with my mechanical pencil. So one note about mechanical pencils, I love mechanical pencils, um, but the problem is with mechanical is that you can't shade quickly, right? You can't really um, shade like this, right? You see, if you sharpen your pencil nicely, you can kind of shade with the edge of your pencil, right? You get really, really quick shades. You can fade. 
uh, and then you can get different types of lines so you can get like you know really sharp lines um, you tilt your pencil a little bit you can get thicker lines or hold your pencil like a lobster like this and you can get thick lines right so with mechanical pencils you don't really get that um, you know mechanical pencils are good for things like architecture drawings or you know here's my mechanical pencil um, it's really good for sketching you know uh, sketching but it's not good for shading at least in my opinion <laughs> um, I do like mechanical pencils for details. You know, you can add you can add details with it later and you never need to sharpen. So I'm a big fan of using just traditional pencils uh, and a pencil sharpener, right? Okay, so, and I normally will also have like a kneaded eraser, but um, Today I'm just going to be using a regular eraser because I know some of you guys don't have kneaded erasers. Um, so I'm going to be braving it without. All right. Yeah, if your pencils wear down too quickly, I, I hear you. Um, but that part's really annoying, but it is what it is. So, all right, so we're gonna start off um, by drawing in the head shape. This is kind of a difficult angle, right? So if uh, you're having trouble drawing the angle of the face, then just remember to start off with your circle, kind of your ball and shield, and then figure out the center line, right? which direction it's going in because you, you really need a head shape in order to draw hair with volume. Okay, so I'm gonna just roughly sketch in the head shape. If you have trouble with head shapes, check out our numerous tutorials um, on head shapes and drawing heads and difficult angles and all that. Okay, so once you have the uh, the head shape down, then I'm gonna put in the ears. So the ears, you know, ears aren't really important, but they're a good landmark for drawing because like if your ear is higher than your eyes, right then you know that the head is tilting down a little bit and if the ear is lower than the eyes uh, then you know that uh, the head is tilting up right so it's 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 really helpful for um, figuring out the right angle without really um, like it's it, it's just a really really good landmark um, but ears in general are not that exciting or important <laughs> in terms of head drawing. Okay, so I said shapes, start with shapes. So I'm just gonna very lightly block in the shape of the head. Uh, Amumu says, nice handwriting. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my handwriting is much nicer with pencil <laughs> on paper than it is Digitally, I, I don't know why, but I my my writing on my tablet is just really messy. Okay, so since she's wearing a very tight ponytail, uh, you know, hair will have volume, right? So unless somebody's standing in the rain or in the shower, the hair might be stuck to the surface of the head, but usually hair has volume right? If you remember your hair has volume, you always want it to be larger than the head shape itself. Um, and in that way, it's a lot more convincing, right? Okay, so I'm giving it a little bit of volume. And then the ponytail is sort of behind, like you can't really see it, but you want to sort of mark where it starts, and then start to put in the shape of the ponytail. Guys, you are making me start with the hardest one. <laughs> I was prepared to like start with straight hair, you know, uh, or like or like the balding one. Those those ones I could do really quickly, uh, but this one, 
This one is the hardest. All right, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see better. All right. <laughs> okay, so I have the shape down. I'm just gonna write this down. So shape, it's kind of my first, the first thing on my checklist. All right, first thing on my checklist is shape. So I got the shape down, the shape of the head uh, and the shape of the hair. Let's see. Zoom in just a little bit. There we go. Okay. All right. So once we have the shape in, um, now we're going to think about our values. So how many of you think about values? Let me know in the chat. Do you think about values when you're drawing hair? <sighs> yeah. Okay. Good. Quinn says, yes. Good. You're probably <laughs> in our classes and we, we definitely stress values. So... I'm glad that you think about that. Kaylee says, me, great. <laughs> Amumu only when I have to. Uh, so uh, Master Zappel says, what pencil hardness are you using? Um, I'm using HB right now. So I usually use my HB to start off my sketch. Sometimes I use 2H, but on stream, I, I just want to draw a little bit darker so you guys can see. Uh, so <clears throat> I would usually start off with my H, right? So for the mid tones, I would do 2H to HB. And then for the darks, I would use 2B to 6B. Okay. All right. So then if I'm thinking about values, um, first of all, there's a lot of line work in the hair. Right. Um, but instead of thinking about lines, you want to think more about your shapes because your shapes are really um, what's going to be the most important in terms of your shading. Right. So if I look at just the dark shapes of her hair, right, she's got she's got an earring here. But. If I'm looking at just the dark shapes, right? I'm gonna start drawing in the areas that are dark. Okay. And because she's got lots of curls, like it really doesn't matter if you get it wrong or you need to uh, do something that's not in the reference picture, doesn't, doesn't really matter, right? Because hair can, you can draw hair uh, and you don't have to follow the reference picture exactly and it'll still work. Okay, so once I've sort of drawn in my smaller shapes, uh, then I can take my 4B, right? Here's my 4B pencil and I'm gonna go in and darken them. And you can see how quickly uh, this hair materializes, so. Let me know in the chat, how many of you guys start your pencil drawings or start your shading with the darkest values first? Uh, Starver says, is hardness and values the same thing when you're referring to pencil grades? That's a, that's a really good question. Um, Hardness, like when I think of a hard pencil, I think of my H pencils, right? So 4H, 2H, etc. Soft pencils are more of like the the B pencils, right? And HB is pretty much in the middle. Um, and so your soft pencils are going to give you the darker values, and your hard pencils are going to give you the the lighter values. So I hope that answers your question. Um, I usually go light to dark because I tend to go too dark too soon. 
says Quinn. Uh, Kaylee says, I always started with the lighter part. <laughs> So there's nothing wrong with starting with the lighter part, especially if you're sort of new to shading, you might be a little bit scared, right, to start with the darks. Um, you really have to get your shapes right, because if you have to go back in and uh, change them, right, it's really hard to erase your dark shapes or your, your, you know, your really, really dark pencil lines. So I get it. I used to start with my lightest values first as well. Um, but then when I got a little bit better at drawing uh, and I could draw something, you know, pretty quickly and accurately, then I realized that the fastest way to shade is to start with your darks, right? Because it's all about context. I'm going to write that down. Context. Shape. I'm going to start with the darks. Start with darks. Yeah, so it's all about context. You're gonna have this demo with all these random words on here. But remember your context, right? If you don't have your darkest points figured out, then you don't really know, you know, sort of what, uh, what your what your darkest point is so then y you have no frame of reference for shading your your lighter parts right you could keep shading and keep shading and keep shading <laughs> um and it just takes forever but if you you know have some darks in then you can sort of fill in the rest a lot faster um let me know if that makes sense Right. So you can already see that the values are starting to take place. Right. I haven't really drawn many lines yet. Um, just focusing on shapes and values. Um, for how long are you drawing or sketching now? Do you mean the Beyonce piece or do you mean for the live stream? Because the live stream is two hours. So it ends at five Eastern time. Uh, for this to this particular sketch, I'm hoping 20, 30 minutes. It might it, it might be a little bit longer just because this is a, a harder one. Um, all right, so you see that she's got a lot of braids here, right? Uh, and then so once I have sort of the darks in. Um, I'm going to start putting in some of the, the the texture here. So she's got some curls and I don't really want to spend a really long time on this drawing, right? I, I wanna draw it pretty quickly. Uh, I'm not gonna do a super, super detailed rendering. I just want it to be, you know, pretty pretty realistic at a glance kind of thing. Right, so I'm just gonna put some curls and some flyaways along the edge here. Right, and then just squint with me here. Squint at the image of Beyonce, okay? So if you squint with me, you'll see that the highlights are really just here at the top, right? There are some highlights down here, but the one thing that I see a lot of people do when they draw highlights is they over highlight, like they put way too many highlights, <laughs> right? Let me know if you do this. Um, oh, Kaylee says, not that, I mean, at what age did you start to draw and sketch? Ooh, I would say four maybe. My, my dear mother has saved all of my drawings from when I was a kid. Uh, I found them recently in my basement <laughs> and they were really, really wonky, but like really cute. Um, but yeah, I think some of them were dated to when I was four years old. So I've been drawing for a long time. I've taken breaks though. Like I haven't been um, drawing nonstop. I, I recently actually last year took a break almost almost a year without drawing that that was i think the longest that i've gone without drawing 
Um, so you're going to see me doing some shading using the side of my pencil. And usually because the light source, I'm going to just draw the light source here, right? So the light is coming from the top. Usually light will come from the top. Um, usually it's sun or maybe it's uh, uh, lighting from above, right? And so usually light will come from above. So if you put in this gradient here, okay, it's going to help show the direction of light. Right. So if you were if if I was doing this demo um, when I was just kind of learning how to draw hair, it would take it, it would have probably taken me days to do this because I, I just don't really know what to prioritize, right? Um, so if you want to shade quickly, then the most efficient way to shade is like this. You start with your darks, then you look for the direction of light and do uh, put in any gradients that you may have, right? And then from there, you can start to add in the the curls. So I'm just going to use my pencil and on the side here and just start to add some in. And I'm not going to necessarily follow the, um, the reference exactly. Right. You don't really need to follow it, it exactly, but just putting in some random strands of hair here. Kaylee says, I'm jealous of your drawing skills. Thank you, but don't, don't be jealous. It's, uh, skills, skills can be learned, you know? I mean, I've, I've had people in my class. There's this one time I, I taught, um, uh, a student and she has never drawn before in her life, but she was like, Oh, I, I, I think it's fun. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it out. And she, guys, she struggled to draw a circle. Like she couldn't draw a circle, you know, like, like <laughs> she had a lot of trouble. So I had to actually um, tell her, okay, draw it in quadrants. And after a year, of drawing she was able to draw characters she was able to draw faces it was incredible and you know what all it takes is it doesn't really take talent it takes you know you guys know what it takes <laughs> interest and effort interest and effort that's it if you're interested and you're willing to put in the effort then you will improve by leaps and bounds um, and obviously it's way faster if you get feedback or if you take classes and, and stuff like that, because, you know, you need, most people need somebody to keep them accountable. Um, it's a lot easier to put in that effort if you have somebody holding you accountable, right? Okay, so I put in some just very basic waves and curls. It's not there yet, but at least, you know, you can kind of understand <laughs> the type of hairdo, um, right? Visually, like even if I didn't finish this, you would kind of know what's going on, right? So that's the most important thing. Um, okay, so now for her braids, I'm just going to erase these guidelines here. Oh, guys, I have this little brush. It's like a makeup brush that was passed down by uh, my husband's grandma, actually. Really, really nice little makeup brush. And look, it's a great way of clearing your eraser shavings. So love this little tool. I don't have to constantly be blowing and... <laughs> Uh, you know, you won't constantly hear me going. <sighs> so 
little tools like that really helpful so for these braids up at the top you know it's going to take a million years for you to make every single detail um, so what i'm really going to do is just focus on the lighting and the texture so texture in transitions Okay, so you don't need to put texture everywhere. You just really need to put it in the transition. So if you take a look at her braids, right, you'll really only see, you'll only really see like the texture coming in during the transitions. So the texture that I'm putting in uh, is actually pretty simple and loose. Oops. So literally what I'm doing, if I zoom in, is like, right? Like that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm not actually uh, making it perfect or trying to make it perfect. I'm just trying to keep it random and quick. So if you are starting art later on in life, um, like good for you, you know, it's super hard to, to decide, oh, this is, you know, this is what I want to do. And I'm going to, I'm going to start, um, and everybody, you feel like everybody has had a head start, right? But let me tell you something. I started ice skating, uh, in my thirties and <laughs> Uh, I stumbled and I, you know, I fell many, many times, got many, many bruises and, but now like, I love it. I had a wonderful coach. Um, if you guys know Gio, she, uh, uh, was my coach also wing canvas studio manager for many years. Um, so I started skating and now I'm like playing hockey and that is like, if you asked me, you know, 10 years ago, I would be, I would laugh. I'd be like, yeah, right. Like I would never do that. I, I didn't even learn how to throw a ball until I was, you know, um, an adult. <laughs> I used to like dread going to gym class. Um, and so you, you guys like learning a skill later on in life is super exciting. Makes you feel like a kid again. Never too late to start. All right. So, you know, this is pretty rough, but you get the idea, right? Of how you can actually draw hair quickly. Um, If you look at the, the demo, uh, details are mostly in the transitions and texture, shade in the direction of hair growth. Shade in the direction of hair growth. So I'm gonna put that in. Um, shade in, it's gonna run into my circle here. Direction of hair growth. These are really the four things you need to remember. Shapes. Start with your darks, texture are in the transitions, and shade in the direction of hair growth. Whoops. Okay. And I'm smudging everything because I'm trying to take notes on the left side and I'm right-handed, so. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna refine some of these curls. Uh, and to do that, I'm probably gonna use a 2B pencil because I find that using super soft pencils um, 
can be it can be a little bit hard to get really sharp lines, right? So again, focusing on my transitions, just building in some of that texture. So instead of lines, lines tend to make everything look a little bit flat, um, unless you're going for that flat look. Like if you're, you know, into cartoons and things like that, then, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but you can see that I'm really only tackling the lines at the very end. Okay. And then, you know, all, all hair have these like little flyaways doesn't matter how much hair gel you have or, you know, how perfect your hair is, unless unless it's like a Pantene Pro-V hair commercial or something. Those models with like super silky hair that probably took hours to straighten and condition. Um, <laughs> usually there's there's flyaways, right? So the flyaways uh, are usually in this corner um, and, you know, over here a little bit. Um, don't forget the sideburns. So even in this image, you know, Beyonce is, has her hair in braids, very, very tight braids, right? Uh, but still, the hairline, when you guys are drawing hairlines, keep the hairline soft. Okay, so soft hairline. If you outline your hair, it's gonna look like a cardboard cutout, right? So it's really important that you keep the hair on the outside as well as the hairline nice and soft. All right. Oh, okay, so uh fake question can you show us later how to draw dwarf or elf hair elf hair what exactly is elf hair i mean this could be elf hair you just give her pointy ears uh right right tell me <laughs> or are you talking about like the the hairstyle where it's like half up half down with like a little braid um that's that's what i think of um masters apple said what paper are you using i'm just using uh sketch paper it's just a sketchbook that actually somebody gave me. It's it's nothing special. It's just uh, has a little bit of texture on it. Personally, I prefer mixed media paper. Um, so, you know, uh, you, honestly, like you could draw this on dollar store paper and it would be the same. Just make sure your paper has a little bit of texture. Um, otherwise, it's... I don't know, I, I kind of like that toothy texture. Otherwise I feel like really, really smooth paper. It's actually harder to erase and it's harder to show some of that texture in the transitions. Okay. So, uh, all right, so let's do the next one. Let me know if you guys have a preference for the next one. I'm gonna do male hair. So maybe we will do the balding hairstyle. Yeah. Give me something easy. <laughs> uh, isn't elf hair just really smooth? Yeah, I mean, we. I had planned a smooth hairstyle as well. Uh, no, not this one. This one, there we go. All right. Okay, Beyonce, you took up too much time. Let's do some other ones. Um, all right, so let's do balding, balding hair, hairstyle. <laughs> all right. Um, and if you want to 
draw along with me and you you know cannot make it to the full stream uh, or you gotta go or you're not in our time zone that's okay uh, the VOD will be available we post all of our streams later on nicely time stamped for you you know so you can always catch up then and let me know in the comments what you found the most helpful what you want to see me do next all right so start with the hair or sorry the head head shape so i always start with the ball and shield and if you're drawing somebody older like particularly an adult uh, or an adult male you'll see that his head is very long right it's like very very long um, so typically speaking when you're drawing younger people children youth uh, their heads are shorter when you're drawing adults or older older men in particular uh, the head shape tends to be a little bit longer and take a look at his neck it's like super thick neck right uh rojan bye i'm glad you had fun and i'm glad you enjoyed the tips glad they were helpful All right, so if you haven't subscribed already, if you subscribe to the channel, you will be notified. I think you gotta hit that bell, but you'll be notified every time we are live. So if there's a stream that interests you, you know, all of our instructors specialize in different things. I'm, I specialize in drawing and painting, more traditional mediums, uh, and Josh, who's streaming tomorrow, uh, specializes in illustration character design and animation so he's going to be doing animation streams uh, you guys probably know Jessie once upon a time she was like the solo streamer for our channel and Jessie and I will stream on Saturdays Jessie specializes in digital illustration comics and well she and she does creature design Creature design is uh, one of her specialties. I'm I'm catching myself like drawing the face. Okay, I'm not I'm not gonna draw the face. I'm gonna focus on drawing the hair. He's got such a compelling face, though, you know. Okay. Like I feel like I feel like his eyes and his his expression really makes the uh, makes this 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 what is this this reference really compelling okay so you can see that sometimes like when you draw a, a circle um, for the head it can look a little bit um, it, it can be a little bit hard to draw the structure um, so sometimes I will you know draw in the shape as a chiseled shape instead of a circle especially when you're drawing males right when you're drawing guy hair drawing in the shapes as more angles rather than curves helps build that masculine uh, build those masculine features right so here you know his hair continues into his beard and so I'm just going to draw the entire thing as a shape. Same thing, beards will also have a bit of volume to them, right? So remember to put in some more volume as you go. Okay. I'm 
Again, I'm catching myself drawing his face. <laughs> okay. Hair, hair. Bay, focus on hair. Don't get distracted by his uh, super intense look here. Okay, so following the same sort of uh, method, um, figuring out my shapes first and then my values, right? So I'm not going to bombard this sketch with too many notes, but um, and here I'm just kind of putting in the outline of his face and then starting it to put in my values. So because his hair is thinning, right, I'm probably not going to use my super dark pencil right away. Um, here it's kind of more important to shade in the direction of hair growth right so over here his hair is going this way um, up top it's kind of going up and down uh, and then here it's kind of coming off to the side uh, and then his beard you know does another thing so just really paying attention to the direction of hair growth so Again, I'm just kind of building in some values initially. And see, if you try to do this with a mechanical pencil, you probably can't. <laughs> it's very hard, right? And when you shade with the side of your pencil, the direction uh, doesn't, I, I guess it doesn't matter as much because you don't really have those fine lines, right? You, you're able to put down some very rough values. So it's almost like a base. If you think about it like that, like a base of color. I'm going to give him a slightly bushier beard um, than in the reference picture. Uh, I realized I got sidetracked. I was talking about our creators. So Josh does animation streams and Iggy also streams on Sundays. Uh, Iggy specializes in digital painting, cartooning, and anime art. So you anime enthusiasts, join Iggy's stream. He's fantastic. He's really chill and super, uh, super nice guy. And, and me, I specialize in figure drawing and portraiture. Um, I'm actually teaching figure drawing this summer with our summer intensives. And I also teach drawing and painting mentorship. So mentorship is actually a great program. It's a very small group of people. It's like six people. Uh, up to six people, sometimes it's less, and we kind of talk about what our goals are, and I will come up with assignments based on what people request, right? So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to learn in a group and support each other. Um, and we've been working on painting and color theory recently. And during portfolio season, we do a lot of figure drawing and anatomy and things like that. Okay, so uh, let's see. Kaylee, catching up with the chat here. Kaylee says, how do I shade white hair? Ha, <laughs> good question. How do you shade white hair? Well, you shade the dark around it. <laughs> so instead of shading the hair, uh, you would shade the background, right? So that the hair is white looks white by con by uh, by context right so if you're like drawing a, f a fluffy white dog or you're drawing an elderly person with like really white hair it's probably better by uh, if you make the skin tone darker or if you are um you know able to shade the background Uh, let's see. 
Quinn says, I finished my first drawing. I'm so happy. Oh, I love that. That's great. Please post it. Um, post it in members critique so I can have a look after stream. Quinn's one of our lovely members. We've been chatting and <laughs> member stream. I'd love to see your artwork there. Uh, the hair looks like it's already there. Thank you. See, it's like easy, right? It's easy if you kind of break it down into just shapes and values. Easier than it looks. Okay, so now that I kind of have the uh, some of the, the basic shading down, I can go a little bit darker and I can start to build up this shading and the values. So I'm not really focusing too much on getting uh, the likeness of him. Like I'm mostly using the uh, image as reference um, for hair. So I'm not really trying to draw realistic portraits, although I feel compelled to draw him. I don't know why. <laughs> I think it's, again, I think it's that intense look. Uh, all right, so just catching up with the chat. <laughs> he is the SM ASMR voice of blank canvas. He is very nice to listen to, right? <laughs> um, my OC has very light gray hair. It was a struggle. Yeah, light, light gray. It's hard to shade light gray. I hear you. Oh, I realize he's got some hair along the back of his neck and like some some neck rolls. Got to put those neck rolls in, right? Looks like he hasn't shaved for a few days. It's like that that scruffy look. All right, so to get some of that scruff, you can shade it really quickly with the side of your pencil. And if you're using textured paper like that, that texture is already built in, you know, so it's actually quite easy to do, quite, quite nice. All right, I told you this guy was easier to do, right? So, uh, Just have to shade in the direction of hair growth and watch your values, right? So balding up at the top. Um, you'll also find that like hair, sometimes the hair will be um, darker in areas where it's like, you know, you're looking through lots of layers of hair, right? So when it all multiplies together, it starts looking darker. So just keep it nice and soft. Can confirm shading with mechanical pencil is not fun, right? <laughs> um, I'd be very interested in taking some of these online classes. Yeah, check out our figure drawing intensive. That's our most popular program and it's only offered in the summer. Uh, it's actually uh, designed for teens, but you know, if you're a young adult, you're welcome to join. And if you can't make the live times, we have recorded learning. So you can learn on your own time and get feedback asynchronously. Okay. Hope you're drawing along with me. If you are drawing along with me, uh, I would love to see your creation. So please tag us. Uh, you can submit your artwork to the traditional uh, channel on Instagram, sorry, on uh, Discord. Uh, where's our social media? There we go. Find us at Wing Canvas. Okay. So I'm just gonna go a little bit darker along the edges. So you can see I've sharpened my pencil a lot so that I can really uh, focus on putting in those textures now, right? So if you're not quite sure about your values, the best thing that you can do is squint. So if you squint 
at the image, just look for the parts that stand out, like part, look for the, the parts that have the most contrast, right? Like this whole side of his face is dark, right? It's much darker. For example, I'm just going to shade in, shade in this side just as a visual reference, right? Because this side is darker, um, this side of his beard is also going to be darker, right? You can kind of emphasize some of the stubble that's along his beard. There we go. And I don't think I don't think there's too much more uh, that I need to do. I mean, I guess I could keep picking away at this, but uh, my goal today is just to get the main idea across, right? How can you draw realistic hair convincingly and quickly uh, is my goal for today's lesson. Would there be more subsurface scattering on balding hair? Oh, balding hair. So, uh, yeah. I don't, I'm not really sure. I guess it depends, right? It depends on the color of the hair. Like usually black hair will have more subsurface um, that appears red anyway. So it, it's usually when you have like a, a lot of hair that's thick and translucent, right? You can see the light coming through. That's really uh, what causes the, the subsurface. Um, but you don't really notice it as much like you would notice it more in the ear right than in the hair if you're like i have no idea what you're talking about what, what is subsurface scattering we have tons of videos about that on our channel um it's basically when uh it's a technique for shading skin um and it's a technique for when when you need to shade translucent skin right uh, and there, it's like that glow. So, you know, if, if you're ever standing in the sun, your ears look red, right? Like it's almost like see-through. Or if you hold a flashlight, if you hold a flashlight through your fingers, you'll see it glowing red, right? That That's subsurface scattering. So once you know what it is, you're going to see it everywhere. <laughs> Yes, if you are a true art nerd, you will know what subsurface scattering is and just, you know, drop, drop that, drop that term in your art class and your teachers will be like, what? And you'll be like, Google it. <laughs> I learned it from Wing Canvas. <laughs> hey, Evie, welcome in. Oh, you're welcome. I love that piece. Thank you for doing the challenge and thank you for being uh, such a wonderful part of our community. Okay, I think I'm gonna move on to the next one unless you guys have any questions about uh, this type of hairstyle or drawing beards. Like drawing beards and, and drawing hair is very similar, right? Very, very similar. Same kind of deal. Uh, all right. So if you are just joining us, welcome in. We are drawing hair today and we are especially focusing on hairstyles, hair textures, and shading. And it's just going to be a pencil demo today. All right. Next. I really want to draw Sandra O. Oh, okay. Sandra O. Oh. <laughs> uh, I love her hairstyle. Let me just pull it up here. Uh, where is she? Where is she? Here. Here. Look at that hair. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful hairstyle. Very triangular. So I think some of you guys said um, that you want to learn how to draw hair for character design. So how many of you guys here draw OCs or have a character that you're working on? Um, and 
you know, you want to design hair that's very memorable. Think about your favorite cartoon, right? Think about your favorite cartoon and the lineup of characters. Usually they have different shapes, right? So shape is so important in drawing uh, characters, in drawing people, in drawing hair. So I'm gonna write this down, shape language, okay? Shape language is an essential design principle. Um, it's not actually, well, shape is an element of art, but shape language is, is like one of the uh, most important aspects of character design. So basically, uh, you know, there are three main shapes, right? You got your circle, you got your square, you got your triangle, and they all represent different, uh, different character traits, right? So round is usually friendlier. The uh, square is usually, um, you know, more, uh, more bold, more stubborn characters and triangular is kind of wild. <laughs> it can be evil. It can also be silly. It, it's, it's kind of a wild card. So, you know, the, the, the goal of this, like, let's say, Let's say I'm not drawing Sandra O, oh, but I'm using her uh, image as inspiration, right? So now it's time to kind of make up our own type of hairstyle. So imagine I'm designing a character uh, and I want the character to have a very memorable hairstyle. Okay, very, very memorable. So maybe I would give her triangular hair, uh, kind of like this, right? A little bit asymmetrical and all that. Um, so I'm gonna, I, I think somebody asked uh, in the comments of the poll, they said, you know, I, I really want to learn how to use shape language in hair. So thank you for chiming in because that's what we're gonna be doing next. Uh, just, just, catching up with the chat here. Is there a specific level required to take these classes? I've always been self-taught. No, there's no specific level. Um, our classes start at age nine to adult, right? Age nine to 99, if you will. Um, and like I said, you don't need any talent. You just need interest and effort, right? Just need to make the time to do it. Uh, we have level one classes uh, that are beginner to intermediate. And then we have level two classes, which are intermediate to advanced. Uh, and then we have mentorship. And mentorship is kind of like, we call it level three, but we do have some beginners who join our mentorship class as well. Um, but mentorship is usually like if you want to learn more advanced concepts or you know exactly what you want to learn, what you want to get better at, um, then level three uh, is, it, level three comes with, coaching and like custom demos. So that's really uh, how our leveling system works. So if you're building a portfolio or if you are working on a comic or you want to work on your OC or something like that, you already have a project in mind, then mentorship is great because you get coaching in uh, small groups. Uh, how do I draw a male with long hair? It's the same thing as drawing a female with long hair. <laughs> Um, just make sure that the face is more chiseled, right? Uh, let's see here. Okay, so I wanted to, like, what I really like about uh, Sandra O's hairstyle here is that I just love the shape of it and I love how it's like larger on one side right so it's kind of like poofy on one side um, it's asymmetrical and it's triangular and I love the lighting on it so I do want to focus a little bit on that uh, and putting in these these amazing large curls right so uh Let's just say, I'm just gonna draw, I'm just gonna turn this into um, a character. No no character in particular, like I'm not really drawing Sandra Oh, I'm just kind of using her, her hairstyle as a reference point.
right? So, all right. So her hair is mostly dark, right? It's mostly, here's my little value skill again. Her hair is mostly dark. So it's gonna be really easy to shade, guys, right? Mostly dark. There are some transitions. So if you look at the edge of her hair on this side, right, you're gonna see that most of her hair is dark. Like you barely see any texture. You see a little bit of texture in the transitions. And then you got that beautiful uh, subsurface in between, like the subsurface scattering is usually in between the shadows and the highlights, right? So it's part of the transition. Uh, and you see like lots of flyaways, lots of texture over here. So we're going to start by using our dark pencil. So I'm going to use a 4B. Uh, and start to shade it in. So we're going to shade in the direction of hair growth. nice and dark and you'll see like there's different clumps right like there's one large shape over here uh, and then one large shape up at the top here so this this curl is kind of <laughs> like that right <laughs> going up Again, just focusing on the darks for now. And this part is sort of important, right, to the style of the hair. So I'm going to keep my shading circular. And normally, guys, I would turn the paper because it's extremely hard to shade in one direction. Uh, but because I'm streaming for you lovely people, uh, it's, I'm going to try to keep my, my book, my sketchbook just level and not turn the page, even though I would always, <laughs> I would always tell my students, please, uh, turn your, your page so that it's not awkward while you're drawing. Okay. So if you're following along with me, feel free to turn your page. Boot like human. Hey, welcome in. Welcome in. Artist in chat. Uh, Shadow says, I looked at the live section on your channel previously, but since couldn't find any current lives, I thought I was on the wrong channel. Yeah, so Iggy is streaming next Sunday. Josh is streaming tomorrow. And... Uh, if you join our Discord, you'll get the uh, notifications. So if you join our Discord and you uh, choose the live stream role, you will get pinged every time we're live. We get pinged directly from the creators. So uh, join our Discord, guys. It's a wonderful community. Um, we get, I know, our uh, students and fans get a lot out of our Discord and it's... I hate social media, guys. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to say it. I hate social media, but I do love Discord. Um, I just think it's such a great way to connect with other people. And our community of art nerds is really wonderful from all around the world, helping each other, supporting each other. Uh, our members also have a exclusive chat on our Discord, and for a limited time, you can join the lowest paid tier of our membership, which is, I think, $2 US a month, and you can get access to live critiques. Yeah, you heard me right. Live critiques, uh, either through chat or through the uh, once a week, our our uh, lovely creators on the channel will be live in the voice chat to give you guys critique. Okay, so I'm kind of, even though uh, 
the in the image there's a lot less detail I, I really want to put in some effort here to um, make sure that I can put in more texture right so I want to keep her hair triangular really exaggerating those curves so you can see you can kind of deviate a little bit from the reference picture but I gotta say that reference is so important like if you want to get good at drawing get good at realism reference don't don't feel like if you use reference you will depend on it forever references help you observe and the key to really good drawing is being able to observe things right because normal normal people like when they look at stuff they don't really look artists look right we have to look because we're, we're learning how to draw something we're learning how to uh, how to observe so observation is you know you should be observing more than you're drawing really and if you don't really know how to observe, then you know how are you going to improve your drawing skills? There's there's no shame, guys, in using reference. In fact, I think it's kind of uh, you're you're kind of stunting yourself if you don't use reference. <clears throat> so. Just because you use reference doesn't mean you will use it forever right sometimes when you're stuck you're just like oh i don't know how to draw this or you know i've been trying for a long time and it just doesn't look right that's when you need to look at references um, because it can be as simple as oh i totally forgot that you know hair does this or um i i totally didn't uh, expect the <clears throat> perspective to be so severe, right? Whatever it is that you observe from reference is a really great way to grow and improve your drawing. Hanging down with lots of strands all over the place. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Just catching up with the chat. <clears throat> If you think you don't need references, try drawing a horse from memory. I know, right? Unless you are, unless you're like a horse expert and you draw horses every single day, you can draw it from memory. Like I actually had a student who was really great at drawing uh, My Little Pony. Like she drew My Little, her, her name is Melody. And uh, she drew My Little Pony like better than anybody else I could have ever, like she was amazing she had like a picture as like a like a photographic memory uh and i could tell you she could draw horses from memory just because she studied them so often right and it was like all she drew um but for me yeah if i had to figure out how to draw a horse especially in like a dynamic pose i would definitely need to look at reference um Okay, so you can see I'm using a, here I'm using a 4B pencil and I'm still not able to get the, the super dark darks, right? So I may have to go in and add them later. So somebody said, how do I draw hair that's white, right? So you see these highlights here? You can't really see the highlights, right? You can't see them because my paper is white. So how do you actually draw those highlights? Um, you have to draw the background, right? You have to draw the background. So I'm going to show you that in just a second, how to actually draw the background. Um, there's just so many wonderful curls that I still want to put in. Like this windswept bob is just so nice. I 
I'm a big fan of Sandra Oh. Like, I remember her first on Grey's Anatomy. Um, that show's been going on forever. Like, I swear. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, this show is still on? Like, <laughs> oh, it's been like over a decade, I think. But, uh, all, all the characters have changed and, and everything, and it's, it's still sort of happening, so... <laughs> Um, I made this character have a very, uh, very long neck. Like I have a very long neck, um, so uh, I'm just giving her more exaggerated proportions. Okay. So for the hair that's on the outside here. Um, what you can do is to draw in some of the background, right? So I don't want to draw in the background so that it's the same type of uh, texture and feeling as the the waves, right? So if, if you're drawing like lots of curls and stuff, then maybe draw the background. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Draw the background differently. Shade it differently. <clears throat> okay. So this is to all the people who said, how do you draw white hair? Well, here's how. This is called artificial contrast. Well, I don't know if that's actually what it's called. It's what I call it. <laughs> it's what I call it when I teach it. Um, artificial contrast is when you uh, create contrast artificially to make one part of your piece stand out more. Right. So in this case, I want to call out the hair, right? Even all these flyaways. So I'm going to take the time to put in some values in the background to make this hair look a lot lighter. And remember how I said, put the details in the transitions. Um, so what I'm going to do now is give my pencil a really good sharpen. And I'm gonna start putting in some of those details. So using a sharp edge, right? This is where you can go and put in that line work. Once you've sort of shaded and got your big picture across, then you can start putting in some of those details. Right, some of that line that we tend to do first, <laughs> right? I'm gonna go real big with her hair, just like super large and in charge. Like I wanna work for a woman with this kind of hair, you know? <laughs> You're just like, yes, whatever you say. <laughs> your Your hair is just, just it's like this is like boss hair I love it I don't know about you guys but my hair has no volume at all and I never do anything fun like this with my hair maybe maybe on my wedding date <laughs> I did something fun but like even then uh, I get my hair cut like maybe twice a year. I don't dye it. I don't do anything fun. Jesse's the one with the fun hair, guys. Uh, I just don't really care about my hair. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah, I know, right? This is such a fun hairstyle. Like it took me forever to find these images because like, I, I don't know, like, you know, I had to find people that I, I wanted to draw people that I, and like hairstyles that were just very interesting and, and, um, I literally spent way too much time looking up references. <laughs> Here are some flyaways, right? And here there's also some white uh back here but i'm just gonna focus my uh 
artificial contrast on one side. There we go. Right. And then if you want to get really dark, so I start to see like there's a lot of details here that's sort of um, taking stealing the limelight away from those transition areas. Right. So uh, if you have parts like that where you're like, OK, I, I have too many highlights going on. Too many highlights will actually make it worse because, you know, um, highlights are us usually come from the top. Right. And if you have highlights everywhere, then it starts to um, interrupt the big picture. So what I'm doing now is I'm just making the darks much darker, getting rid of some of that texture. Because I remember, you just want the texture in the transitions, right? It's very strategic. Texture in transitions. So, you know what, fun fact, we, I, I know that uh, on, online learning is something that is like, I know it's kind of been around forever, but uh, it's also new for a lot of people. And we started off as a local studio uh, based in Canada. And after COVID or during COVID, we, we really uh, discovered that there was a huge need of people people needed creativity <laughs> right like we were all cooped up at home and we just really needed a creative outlet and so when we moved online we discovered an amazing international community of art nerds just like us um and it's been incredible to see how much has changed and how, how far, uh, <laughs> you know, how, how far our reach has gone uh, with our channel. So I just want to take the time and thank all of our supporters, our patrons, our members, our fans, our students. Um, and if this is the first time you have joined a stream, um, please join our Discord and find us on social media. I'd love to connect with you and see your artwork if you're drawing along with me. Okay. So let me know if you have any questions uh, about this technique in particular. Right now I'm just kind of getting rid of some of those extra highlights making sure that there's not too many highlights because that's a common problem. But yeah, with online classes, we, we actually use Google Meet uh, and Google Classrooms. So you can get uh, asynchronous feedback and if you can't make it live, you can get class recordings and feedback from your instructors that you upload or on artwork that you upload. So it's a really flexible new way of learning. And I think it's going to really change the way we learn in general. OK, so that's it for the big poofy triangular hair. Um, you know, I could probably exaggerate it even more if I wanted to, if I wanted to make it even more, you know, triangular, I can kind of trim down this part, right? Make this part a little bit more uh, of an angle, but I, I like the, like the big poofy bob that's going on here. So uh, let's see. All right. So I wanted to draw Trevor Noah um because he's he has uh lots of texture in his hair 
so. Thank you, Sandra O, oh, for being a lovely model and for having awesome boss lady hair. Uh, let's do Trevor Noah. Let's do Trevor Noah. Okay. Let me know in the chat if you have ever drawn hair like this before and how you would approach it. Um, you wanted to see this one the most, Quinn? Okay, awesome, awesome. This one's actually pretty easy. Um, it may look hard, but it's actually pretty easy to do. I think the hardest one was Beyonce, so I'm glad that that one's over. Um, <laughs> okay, so Trevor Noah. Again, we're going to start with the head, ball and shield. This man has volume, like this hair. Wow. It's like a cushion, like I could just put my face on the top of his hair and fall asleep. It's just like so soft and fluffy looking. <laughs> I had a friend once who had hair like this and um, I was I was kind of embarrassed because I didn't you know I I, I wasn't gonna say like can I can I just like touch your hair or put my face on it I didn't want to be weird but like I really wanted to do that I think it would have been easier if, uh, if my friend was female but it was uh, like a male friend and he just had like the best floofy hair that I just always just wanted to put my hands in it um, <laughs> You might think I'm weird, but <laughs> you know, when you, when I, like I'm somebody who has just very flat, boring, straight hair. Uh, so, you know, when I see hair that's different than mine and hair that's just, I found it so appealing. <laughs> um, like a cloud, yeah, <laughs> like a cloud. Um, Amumu says, I never actually got to shade the hair, but I've blocked out the shape. Okay, so let's let's do some shading here. Just grab a pencil, make sure it's nice and sharp. That's all you need. Make sure it's nice and sharp. And we are going to block out the shape. So this guy has like tons of volume, right? So just exaggerate, exaggerate that volume. How are we doing for time? 438, okay. So I think this is gonna be the last one, guys. Okay, so the shape for this is actually pretty easy, right? It's just really just a shape that's on top. Um, And again, like I'm not actually drawing Trevor Noah. I'm just kind of draw using his hair style as an example and just kind of drawing in a little bit of the face so that we have some reference, like a reference point. So really just kind of getting this, uh, getting a quick, quick drawing here. of a face. So I did choose references that were slightly more difficult angles, uh, just cause you know, I, I know that uh, drawing hair from the front is usually a lot easier than from the side. Yeah, floofy. I know, right? Like, if you have a really good friend with floofy hair, you can you can just <laughs> you can ask them if you, if you can just bury your hand in it. <laughs> um, maybe one day, if I if I ever see Trevor Noah, I'll be like, you know, I'm only gonna get this one opportunity to ask. But can I smush your hair? All right. 
Okay, so uh, with this, like if you squint at his hair, right, you can see that the the shading is actually really easy. It's like the darks are down here and the lights are up here. It's like actually very, very easy to do. Um, and let's see here. I kind of... I kind of made the uh, the ears a little bit too high. Again, they don't really line up with my eye properly, so I'm just gonna move that down a little bit. So again, if you weren't here for the beginning of the stream, when you are drawing ears, right, you wanna make sure that they make sense with your eye, right, and the alignment of your eye. Uh, I will go over that if we ever do a tutorial uh, or a stream about drawing faces. I have one planned on drawing eyes, so we will save it for that stream and just focus on hair. Um, but ears, you know, really good landmark. One of the most common things that people forget when they are drawing hair is sideburns. So you can't really have sideburns without ear, without an ear, right? <laughs> So having that ear will give you um, a good idea of placement for the sideburns. Okay. Uh, let's see. I also made his head a lot longer because the, I wanted the hair to be even floofier, right? So what I'm going to do here is just use the side of my pencil and I'm going to mess up that edge. So I'm just going to do some random random line art here and I'm not using the tip of my pencil I'm using the side of my pencil because if I use the tip of my pencil my line is going to be really hard right and I want soft lines not hard lines so next I'm going to use my uh, I'm using a 5b pencil because soft pencils are really good for this type of texture this type of hair texture in general um, So, and using the side of my pencil, just building up a base. And then for the lighter parts, you know, I'm also like, he's got black hair. So guys, if you are drawing black hair, right, there's not really going to be white highlights on black hair. Like black hair is still going to be black. So the highlights are still, they still need to look like highlights on black, right? Uh, like if you have blonde hair, then the highlights may, might be a lot lighter. But if you are drawing dark hair, the highlights are still going to be dark relative to the rest of the, the face, right? So if you look at his face and you squint with me, right? Overall, his face is lighter than his hair, right? In the shadows here, they tend to kind of blend together. Um, but generally speaking, black hair is still going to appear black in the highlights. So one of the biggest mistakes um, that I see people do when they're drawing hair is they make the hair really light. Like they give it super white highlights on black hair. Now, not to say that that never happens. Like sometimes it does. Usually black hair will have white highlights if it's wet and, you know, under a really, really... Uh, bright light or something like that right not to say it doesn't happen it does but not often so uh, try not to over highlight try to over simplify like if you see my process what I'm trying to do is over simplify over simplifying is actually harder <laughs> let me know in the chat if you tend to complicate things um, I think I, I tend to complicate things outside of drawing. <laughs> um, it's just kind of in my nature, but uh, with drawing, I think over the years, I've figured out how to, how to simplify. 
better than uh, than I used to. So you can see even with some simple shading, you start seeing that texture. Hey, Drill Fox, long time no see, welcome in. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, you know, it, it it is faster than you think, right? Like if you do it in, if you prioritize certain things, it can be a lot faster, right? So some key tips are to squint a lot when you're drawing because squinting helps you figure out your values, right? Squinting is one of those things that we don't do enough of. Uh, as artists. <laughs> um, and the other thing would be starting with your darkest values first so that you are not shading something forever, right? Um, since eyebrows and mustache are or beard are also considered hair and I have a little bit of time, I'm going to put it in because why not? A right, little bit of scruff. I know mustaches and uh, beards are in, like, they're really in right now in fashion. But I remember before, like, clean-shaven faces were really popular. And for some reason, like, beards have come, they've made a comeback. I know it's, it's, they're probably going to um, not be in fashion again uh, at some point and then come back. But... Personally, I like beards on guys. I like the look. But like, if somebody has a lot of hair on top, right? If you just have like so much hair and you also have a beard, it's kind of too much. It's like hair all around like a lion, right? <laughs> Um, so I like the, uh, I, I like the, the balance. So if you, if it's like balding on top, beard on the bottom, or like big hair on the top and like light, light beard, beard on the bottom. I think that that is like a nice balance, but you know, it's just personal <laughs> preference. <clears throat> Quinn says, I didn't realize they went out of fashion. Oh yeah. Yeah. They were, uh. Oh, I can't I can't even remember like which years they were uh, in fashion for but I think I'm old enough to remember when beards were not fashionable and people would cringe and think like oh if you have a beard you're an old man kind of thing but like, now they're all the rage. So you can see that the texture of his beard is a, 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 or his mustache is a little bit different, right? It still is a little scruffy, but you can see the texture and the, the strokes a lot better. Um, you can see the individual hairs a lot better. Right, so I'm just going to take a little bit of time to get that right. <laughs> looks like a cloud. You know what? If it looks like a cloud, then I did my job. <laughs> it doesn't, it, it's flat though. It doesn't, doesn't feel like a cloud at all. Um, oh, and another thing I want to uh, address, some common mistakes. Okay. Let me know if you've ever done this. Most common mistake I see uh, is uh, one of the most common mistakes for shading is smudging. Let me know in the chat if you are a smudger. <laughs> Put smudge in the chat if you are a smudger. Do you smudge your pencil? Whenever I see my, my students smudge, I'm like, don't smudge, don't smudge, <laughs> no smudging. Um, 
I only say this because like there, yes, there are lots of artists and very successful ones who rely on smudging. Um, but personally, I think it's a terrible way to learn shading. Uh, if you know how to shade and you're really good at your values, then, you know, you can smudge things like the background if you want it to blur or you want to, um, uh, you want to, uh, have things look more distant in the background. Like that's like the only, only, um, way I would say, okay, go ahead and, and, and smudge it a little bit so that it's, uh, not so texture heavy right but smudging is terrible it's a terror i used to do it too i used to have like my blending stumps and get all serious about my smudges uh and then <laughs> and then i relied on it i wasn't able to shade things without smudging you know and that that's that's actually terrible because you don't really know how to use your pencil you don't really learn how, like, what is the proper way to to um, to shade and to uh, capture values without relying on it. So if you are a smudger, uh, no shame, nothing wrong with it. I, I used to do it as well. Um, you you just you don't know what you don't know, right? So try challenging yourself not to smudge. And see what happens you will see your uh your drawings improve by a ton or your shadings improve okay yeah, so I think like this one actually didn't take much time at all, but I like the way it turned out. I like the texture of this. So um, let me know if you're drawing along with me. Tag us at Wing Canvas so that we can see your lovely creations. Share them on our Discord. And on our, the other benefit of joining our Discord is that we post all of our notes and our demos after the stream on there. So you can get uh, our, our final images, our written notes, um, and it's, uh, it's just great to kind of see everybody talking about art and nerding out in one place. When I say nerding out, it's usually about anatomy or video games or character art. <laughs> um, and love to see all the artwork everybody's doing. Again, I'm getting, I'm a portrait artist by trade, so I am very like, <laughs> I, I just feel compelled to draw the face. Um, even though I know that that's not the, the focus, but <laughs> I think he has a, a really nice lighting too on his face. So just wanted to quickly put that in. All right. So uh, thank you guys for all the compliments. Um, <laughs> I folded and put line art over my drawings. Oh no. <laughs> Aw. Yeah. You know what? We have to resist. If you if you are a cartoon artist or a digital artist, it is sometimes it's like you can't resist but put line line art on top, right? Especially if something's not working or the drawing's off and, and you want to fix it. Um, and I think that, uh, you can get the realism back. Like sometimes instead of drawing lines, like for example, uh, if you're drawing lines on hair, right. And you're drawing an outline. So let's say you draw an outline like this, right? So this type of outline is still natural looking, but this type of outline is not. Okay. 
So what's the difference between this type of outline and this type of outline? Let me know if, if you see the difference. Here's, here's another good way of drawing an outline of hair, right? Like this is a good outline. This is a bad outline, right? What is the difference between a good outline and a bad outline? Quinn says weight. Kevin says hard edge versus soft edge. Yeah. So both of those things. Also variety, variety edges, right? So having a variety of edges um, is and randomness, like being random. Random and variety are, are sort of related, right? So if you are, uh, if you struggle a lot with uh, line art looking too cartoony uh, or flat, it's probably because you are not um, using variety. So you can put line art on top. Just make sure that your line art breathes, right? Just make sure that it ha it ebbs and flows. It feels natural. Um, and it's not just like one hard line, right? Unless you're trying to uh, draw a cartoon, then that's different. All righty. So, oh, I'm just going to take a break and shake out my hands a little bit. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions about uh, specific techniques or anything like that. Um, but otherwise, this is the last uh, demo for today. Just going to catch up with the chat. Uh, let's see. I am an avid smudge hater. <laughs> Good job, Quinn. Nice. Let me know if you smudge with your digital art. Because you know what? I'm not a smudger with my traditional, but sometimes I smudge digital. <laughs> um, and I know I shouldn't, but sometimes I do. Um, and I know, like, guilty in one medium, right? Um, let's see. Oh yeah, Kevin says we're at 399,000 subscribers. We are hoping to hit 400K. So if you haven't subscribed, uh, please do that and help us reach our next goal. 399K guys, that's awesome. I'm um, just incredibly uh, grateful at everybody's um, support so far on the channel. So. Uh, Evie says, one time my teacher said not to use any smudging on a project and she would know and my classmate took a smudge bar and made the whole drawing with just the smudger and she gave him top marks. What? What? <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, we've come so far. I know, right? It's, uh, it's, it's awesome. So we do have something cool planned for 500k so definitely uh please help us reach that goal if you found this tutorial helpful and if you like joining our live streams um please uh stay in touch join our discord join our patreon and you can get more of the special bonuses like you'll be the first to see all of our new videos, right? We have pre-release video access, so you can see our first drafts of our videos, uh, give us feedback. And once a month on the VIP Art Nerd tier and above, you get a monthly live class recording. So you can see what our classes are like, uh, and you can get members only critique on those classes. So if you do the work and you, uh, get feedback on your artwork. That is the fastest way to improve. So definitely check out our Patreon and join us tomorrow at 3 p.m. for Josh's stream. Uh, Josh is going to be continuing his animating mouth stream. So also a uh, really, really fun, fun stream. I was there last week and just he, he was making all of these like 
mouth sounds to be able to animate the audio and uh or sorry to to, to animate the uh the little character that he drew so also really really fun and yeah if you want to learn with me or our other creators check out our classes exclamation point classes we have all sorts of different programs i teach drawing and painting mentorship uh, and that's thursday nights at 8 p.m eastern time it's a two-hour class a very small class uh, lots of individual critique um, we are working on painting right now but we also do drawing i specialize in figure drawing and portraiture and painting especially mixed media. So thank you guys so much for joining our stream and I will see you in two weeks. I will be teaching you guys how to paint water. So if you're interested in learning how to paint water, uh, join me in two weeks on Saturday. All right, guys, glad you guys could make it and thanks for all the support. I will see you guys soon. Bye-bye.